You know what it is, man. DJ Thorough, a.k.a. Thorough Zano, the bridge to the streets. Right now, you're watching the hottest in the streets. Right here on thisis50.com. You know what it is, man. Got a special guest in the building, man. What up? Introduce yourself. Yo, it's Keith Robinson, live and direct from New York City. All right. Listen, hey. I got to get right into it. When I was coming up as a kid, and yeah. I'm sure like a lot of kids, and even you, yeah. you had you have a you you had a dream you had a you landed excuse me a dream role in the Power Rangers. Oh yeah. yeah. I always wanted to be a Power Ranger yeah. or a He Man or a Batman. Or, right. Yeah. You know, super you know action hero. How did you land that role? I mean, it was basically it was an audition, man. It was just I wasn't even acting. That was my first acting gig. So okay. it was like I just went to an acting class with this this chick that I was hanging out with and. Read a, read a role she thought it was good and told me to come back and read for this audition so and it was that easy i mean wow. I, I, like it was it happened easy for me in that respect because i was already grinding in the music right. and everything but uh but yeah i, was like, I didn't even have a headshot man i had a fake camera a little disposable <laughs> camera <laughs> he had a truck for him. <laughs> literally we was out in front of my building taking all the different pictures and, and then we went to the one hour photo because that's when you go to one hour photo wow. kinko's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I came back in with like this picture of me just like like this, <laughs> this boom, and they were laughing. But I think it worked because they it were like, yeah, worked. it ran, yeah. It definitely worked. Now yeah. let's go back to your humble beginning. How yeah. did you get started in what? this business? Well, I mean, I was I started off in a singing group, R and B singing group in high school. Okay. We was like uh, you diet. You like an R and B singer too? You okay. like you sing? Well, that's yeah, that's what I do. So okay. we was like it was in a group like we was like the uh, diet Jodeci. We was Di called Chemistry. <laughs> Chemistry. So we was like some high school, we had the combat boots, the long jacket. Right. So I was in Georgia, in Augusta, Georgia doing that. Went off to college, then got in another group. Uh, and then we got a deal. We signed a deal with Motown. And mm. um, we, we dropped out of college. And that really was my interest into show business. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you were originally a singer first, and then you moved yeah. into yeah. Um, comedy? Well, no, not comedy. I moved, well, I did some comedic movies, but I moved into acting. All right, so you were never doing stand-up? I've never done stand-up. you never done stand-up. You think about Keith Robinson, the stand-up oh, comedian, there's right. two of us. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm yeah. watching white people now, but you all look alike, right? <laughs> <laughs> no but doubt. anyway, so back to the, um, you know, your humble beginnings. Where are you originally from? I'm from Georgia, man. You're from Georgia? Yeah, yeah, Georgia, South Carolina area. I was born in Kentucky. Right. But I grew up in the Georgia, South Carolina area. Atlanta, Augusta, Greenville, South Carolina. City's about all than about an hour and a half of each other. All right, so have you yeah. completely done away with the music and you're just focused on... No, I got a new album out right now okay. called Love Episodic. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the album, that. The album is out, Love Episodic. The new single is out, it's called Never Be You. Never Be You. Uh, it drops this week, the video drops this weekend. It's like a, we also did a 12 minute movie to it with myself and Tony Rock. Right. Where we, re we recreated uh, Coming to America, oh, oh. the dating scene. That's dangerous, man. When people start yeah. touching classics. Well, you know, we, that's, we, that's, I think we did it justice. And what it is, we just took one scene out of it. Uh, because the song is called Never Be You, meaning no matter where I go, whoever I try to replace you with, they'll never be you. They'll never be so you. So you remember the scene in the Coming to America where they were uh, in the club looking for different for, for, for chicks, like my name is Keisha and, and I'm, I'm the best. best. All, All the DJs, DJs love to, to feel, feel her breast. breast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I know>. Exactly. <laughs> too, yeah. So we recreated that joint. It's, like, oh. so it's, a, it's a dude who's actually going through it with his girl. He's an artist, right. uh, he, he splits from his girl, and then one day he's in his apartment watching Coming to America, mm. and he has this epiphany about, you know, cause he doesn't see green, he's, he's, he's went out and saw greener grass, and he's like, I need to go back to my, to my show, back. cause he's back out in the dating field, dating, you know, right. he seems like it's a bunch of duds, Right. And uh, you know, the grass ain't greener on the other side. So that's what the song is about. Right. Well, there's this yeah. saying, the grass is greener on the other side because it's artificial turf. Exactly. Mm, I just dropped so, a gem, right? That, that was a gem. That's that was a gem. A gem. Yeah. You can run with that too if you need it. Appreciate you. <laughs> but, the art, but it's artificial, you know, like you say. because yeah, you know, it's artificial. You know, you might be, be down with somebody, but you'd be like, man, you know, it's a bunch of bad ones out there that you want to go seek out, but once you get out there, you're like, they'll never be, right, have so that intangible the reason why you were there. So sometimes it's worth sticking it out. Right. Sometimes. sometimes. So that's what the song is about. That's what the video is about. So yeah. Right. And where's the video? What platform is the video on? The video is going to be everywhere. It's, okay. it's, uh, it's uh, all digital outlets, YouTubes, Music Choice, everywhere you can find videos. Right. You'll see the video as well as the album. It's on iTunes, Spotify. You can download the album. Hopefully this is 50. Of course this is we'll 50. We'll post the link to right. the video. Right. I'm going to show you the video before we, before yeah, we get so you up. I want to so up on the music grind. I definitely want to uh, see the video. Now, are you yeah. uh, independent? You got a label behind I'm independent. You? I'm distributed through Empire. But, Empire. Uh, I'm, shout out Empire. Shout man. out. Big shout out to Empire. Right. 
Uh, but I'm, I'm an independent R&B artist, you know, okay. always have been. You know, I've done a lot of songs in the different movies that I've been involved in and right. movies that I wasn't, didn't act in. So right. I've always done the music thing. People just haven't really known have, about it. Right. They know my face from TV and from film. TV. But I'm a singer. I'm a, I'm a singer a songwriter. Singer. That's that's how that's where it starts. So and you ends consider yourself so. a singer first. Yeah, if I had to choose, yeah, at first, choose. it start. If I had to choose, it, it would be music because that's where I started. You know what I mean? But right. I love them both. I mean, every right. scene has like a rhythm to it. Every song got right. an element of drama. So I'm a two sport athlete. Right now, is there advantage to doing both? Like you, you, you sing and you, you know, and you doing movies and you're acting. Now, how do you balance it too, or does it work out to your advantage? Because you do the soundtrack to the, the exactly. stuff. Exactly. That's how I look at it. I think it works okay. out to my advantage. I, I need both. I mean, if I'm on the set, I'm always right thinking of new records. If I'm on in the studio, I'm thinking about how visually I can make this song come to life. So. I mean, I'm just an artistic person, so I like I don't ever want to have to choose creatively, and I think it helps us, you know, two streams of income. Right, all you know, time. and and it's thirty uh, streams of income. Sure. Yeah, third, and I think it's you know you got to diversify as artists. You mm -hmm. know, to be one dimensional is kind of all of us aren't afforded that luxury. You, right. you got to be able to kind of, you know, sing a song, do a scene, tell a right. joke. You, you, you know, you know who I get? Uh, I would say I would. You kind of remind me of like. Uh, Say a Jamie Foxx. Foxx, yeah. yeah. He does both. Yeah. Shout out Jamie Foxx. Yeah, shout out Jamie Foxx. We did a movie together, actually. Yeah, I was I was throwing the alley. Boom, that was nice. That was nice. That was nice. That's what I do. Up here. Very, very subtle. <laughs> let's very talk subtle about let's, yeah, let's talk about that movie. For, yeah. For people that may have not seen it or know about it. Dream Girls. Uh, yeah. It was, a, it was it was a pretty big movie. Right. Uh, myself, Jamie, Jamie Foxx, Eddie Murphy, Beyonce, <sighs> Tim Hudson. Uh, Nick and Only Roll, Danny Glover, wow. and Red what, Divine. It was, what it was, what was that like? Working with all these yeah. these legends, man. It was dope, man. It was like being on an All Star team. Now this is an All Star team. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. It was dope. Right. Everybody had was excited about being a part of the project. We, right. you know, had a healthy respect for one another. I was kind of the unknown. I think me and Jennifer were the only ones that were kind of coming in that were kind of like the newcomers, the new right. faces. But um, it was fun, man. Like we we uh, we all got along, and everybody was really just. Focused on doing their part, and, okay. Because you didn't want to drop the ball when they throw you the ball, right? You want to, you don't want to look like ah. So everybody did their thing, man. And the movie's a classic, right? Would you say that's your biggest role? Or I think biggest it, I, movie today. Yeah, I would say it's the yeah. biggest movie. I mean, it's a movie that, you know, if I walk in the room, you know, eighty percent of the people in the room have seen it. Right, right. So, so I guess in that respect, it's probably it's probably a, right. my biggest movie. Now, yeah. now, another thing that I grew up on as a kid was Fat Albert. Fat Albert, yeah. Now, how did you get that situation going? That was the same thing. That was an audition. That was basically, you know, uh, me going in and competing. But basically, and it came down to me and a, a couple other guys. Right. And, and, uh, and Bill chose me to play him. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, see, I, I was gonna get on that. Yeah. How? Because I always, you know, Bill Cosby. Fat Albert. That's that's, yeah. that's just they just go together because that's yeah. that was the show. Work. Now, what was it like working with Bill Cosby? It was like working with your dad, with your uncle, <laughs> like you do the guy that you looked up to, like right. every Thursday night when the street light come on, everybody was in front of the TV. It was like wow. It was like you know he was a, a mentor. He was somebody that you felt like you could ask like some advice. He right. was stern. He had his set of values, and right. it was uh yeah. I mean, he was exactly how you thought he would be. You right. know well, how you thought he would be. Now, obviously. I Everybody knows what's going on with Bill. What happened with him? Yeah. What, what is your thoughts on that? You know, the whole he got, you know, he got sent. He was you found know guilty. what? I think it's it's sad, man. All the way around, it's tragic. It's uh, it's more shocking because it's like he was uh considered America's dad, and now it's completely 180. It's like right. Yeah. So, I mean, where does smoke does fire? So to the victims, if it, you know, whatever happened, it's it's um, it's just tragic. It's tragic on both sides. It's unfortunate, right. but um. You know, it, you read what you saw, I guess. You know, what you do in the dark comes to the light. Right. Whatever, whatever that was on either side. Right. Um, it's just something. Did you see man. any evidence of that when you were interacting? Nah. Or, nah. I don't know. You in the industry, you know what goes on. Did nah, you ever man. see, like, oh, okay. When Bill come in the room, you you straighten up, you sit up straight, you right. like, Mr. Sir, calm, you <laughs> making sure you ain't got nothing on your shirt type right. shit. You know, it was like, so you never thought, like, he was, like, doing what. What, they says, alleged, what they've say, allegedly say, what's, what's come out it was like total opposite like you would say like no mom, I'm good I'm with Bill Cosby like I'm in good hands right I'm in better hands now than I was at home right. so it was like that so you never saw anything like that you never saw nothing like that ever wow not nah, I mean plus I'm a dude so it's like you know right well, and I was playing yet. him so it right. was all business we were on set right you know him when I when I got the role his wife him and Camille wrote me a letter personally thanking me right and you know we did the screening the, the premiere in Philly at, at Temple University so it was just like right. it was grandiose it was my first studio movie so it was a big deal it was like right it was right. no it was no debauchery going on right I like that word 
debauchery. Can't spell it, but I like it. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> All right, since we're on the topic of icons, who are some of the um, your favorite icons we're going to do with actors that you looked up to or maybe inspired to be like? And now you have to working with some of them. Some of them. Um, right. I think Denzel, of course, oh. is, is definitely like Putting number one. cases on all you motherfuckers. Exactly. <laughs> um, I like Will Smith, man. I like his energy. I think he'd be dope to work with. Um, right. Of course, the greats, the De Niro, and I like Jeffrey Wright. I think he's dope. Right. Um, I mean, the list is long. You know, I'm right. a fan first. You're a fan first. So, you know, I love Mel Street. I love I love the veterans because they're always interesting how they kind of right. transfer energy and, 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 you know, move a room with right. their craft. So I'm always interested in trying to um, pick their brains and right. copy off of them, you know. Your, your story of how you got the Power Rangers was, was kind of a little similar to how Will. Did you see his story about how he got I the did. role in yeah. Fresh Prince? He yeah. was just like, what's yeah. your rap name again? Fresh Prince? Okay, we're going to call it that. Be here, that's just, and that's yeah. like, like crazy. He said, "He's like, dude, man. I can't act. I'm not an actor. Like, I, yeah. I don't." He, he's like, "Got ten minutes to change your life, or fuck it." Yeah, that's what Quincy told him. And you could see him like kind of um, getting better as he when he first right. got there. He was he used to mimic the words of the other actors. Oh, the other actors. Yeah, I noticed that too. Am yeah, I he's, am he's, I that observant? Because I used to do I, that. Yeah, right. well, yeah, he used to do that. Right. But um, you know, it's Will Smith. The rest is history. You know, right? Icon. Okay. That's how it works though sometimes. The universe lines up and chooses you. I think that's what happens. All right. Now, are you looking to have your own like blockbuster film? Like, Is that of something course. you inspired yeah. to do? You got yeah. any roles, that, that upcoming roles that we should look forward to? Well, I just did a movie. I just, this movie called Gangland, which is kind of like, a, it's actually a, I call it like West Side Story meets Menace to Society, which mm. is kind of interesting. It's kind of a play, kind of an experiment. It's like a musical kind of, um, so that, that'll be out top of the year, but I'm working on a show myself called, uh, LA Social, which is a which is a half hour drama, and which I'm actually writing and producing. Right. And another show called Doobie Right, which is about a young songwriter who moves out right. west from the south and right. gets inundated of, of, and sucked into the vortex of right. that Hollywood life. So there's a couple of pet projects that I'm working on. Yeah. Right. I, I want to get your uh, opinion on something. Yeah. Um, do you ever, as black as a black actor, yeah, and um, artist, singer, dance, um, pet dancer, artist. You ever get typecasted because you're black, or you, you can only, you know, you only get scripts in certain roles, and you're like, what the fuck? Is I mean, that's pretty. I think, I think now that's kind of, it's kind of varied. I mean, you get typecasted based on if you do something well, like if it's a singing role or something. Like, oh, well, Keith, we, we'll see Keith like for that. So, and it, it's kind of hard for people to see you as something else. So you have to work to stay out of that box. But not, I don't think it's necessarily a black thing. Right. I think that's kind of I say, but a thing where they, they know they've seen from my body of work. Right they're more apt to see me in, in a light of playing that role again. Like if I wanted to play like uh, a villain or, 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 or a serial killer, right. it's like, it, it, it would be, it would be I, even though I can do it, I would have to extra sell them because they've already seen me as Bill Cosby as and as right. Dream Girls and as a Power Ranger. So like we can't see you. You can't see you, so you gotta prove Cutting yourself. anybody's head off <laughs> every night. And even right. though I was like, no, I can do that. I, I can. I have that range. Right. So sometimes it takes uh, a little bit more because whatever you do good, they're gonna put you in a box, and it's right. your job to try to stay out of the box. Now, is there a role? I mean, obviously you have range. You can, like you said, you can do anything if you put your mind to it. At least I believe that. Is there a role that you just absolutely wouldn't do? It goes against your whole. Man, um, or just whatever. Is there anything you wouldn't do, acting wise? Uh, it depends on what level I would have to do it. Okay. But nah, not not much. I would play. There's not much that I would uh, not do. I mean, I'm pretty right. open. I mean, there, but there's some. If I'm compromising my manhood in a certain way, uh, I, I probably couldn't do that. Right. All right. Okay. But you know, I can play. I want to be able to tell every every story, every man's story. Right. So me personally, this is what I'm tired of in Hollywood. I'm tired right. of these fucking slave movies. That's just me though. You ain't you ain't the only I'm, one. I'm I'm yeah. I'm tired of it. Right? Yeah, we we know the story. We know how it ends. We know how it ends. Like, like how it okay. Right. Right. I, I mean, think there's a lot of stories within the unique within the slave, uh, the slave struggle that right. have that, that have not been told. That they uh, not tell. That they won't tell. That, yeah. That, why that, don't like, they tell you know, that? Because they feel like maybe it's not marketable. It's not. It's not what people want to see. I mean, they want to see. Bad. But I think the struggle of us being in bondage, and being held down, and being murdered and maimed, and set our families died, separated, and so forth. I think that story's been told. Right. I think there's stories within that story, of perseverance and people like we might not know of, 
certain slaves who had these amazing skills and stuff like that, those stories can still be told. But right. that, what you're talking about, yeah, I think it's a little worn now. I think we get it. Right. We should, long as we don't forget it, then I think we we can move forward. Well, they make sure you don't forget the shit because every five yeah, fucking two years, it's a new fucking movie. Fifteen years of slave. Fifteen years of slave. Twenty years of slave. Oh, he forgot something. He came back. 34, the sequel. Thirty-four days ago, the yeah. day after the French <laughs> office slave. French office slave. The slave that won. <laughs> the slave that don't give a fuck. The slave twins. <laughs> no, I get it. Twerking the slave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Speak, let's get back to the music. Yeah. Who were you looking up to musically growing up? Like, how did you get into uh, music? How did you know you could sing? Yeah, well, my mom was a singer, and she actually oh, had a deal. Was she a famous singer? Or she just... No, she almost was. She had a deal with Motown back in the well, day, shit, day. I'm most of shows Alabama. She never signed, though, because my grandma didn't want her to sing secular music. So I grew up in a musical family. She always had records. My brother had a lot of records. So, I mean, growing up, you know, it was hip-hop. It was, of course, all the, all the greats, the biggies, uh, you know, all the way back to, to you know, the LLs, the, that whole movement as a kid. And then R&B was... Um, no Edition, mm. Jodeci, Boyz II Men, Stevie Wonder, the whole Motown, Michael Jackson, you know, all the greats I loved. Right. Uh, I loved the Terrence Trent Darby's uh, Sting, Seal, Sade, you know, all those, all those Friday, records. Friday, I used to love the era of, uh, you know, the UTFOs and, Can't go kid. and you know, Dr. so I'm, I'm a music, you know, You know music, sword. man. You, you, yeah, I love I'm music. I'm talking so to you, man. That's pretty much what, you, you definitely know. know. He said UTFO, Can't Go Kid, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't know who that. that is, then... You're not hip-hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so, end, the end of the story. Yeah. Because my brother would buy the records, and then I would end up taking the records and, like, playing them until the grooves were wearing off. Right. So did you ever dabble in DJing or no? Nah, I never dabbled nah. in DJing, nah. You, you, nah. Never, you never dabbled in that? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Right. Now, do you ever get in a situation where, okay, I got to do this movie over here, but I'm on tour to go perform. How do you balance that? Like, how does that work? You just balance it. I try to make it happen. I mean, I've, 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 I've been pretty good at balancing it and making sure that usually when I'm filming it, they'll block you off. So that's it's a good time to record because okay. mm -hmm. a lot of times you're on set all day, you have time to write, think, and sometimes the work you're doing is kind of in giving you creative ideas. Right. Then after you get off set, you go to the studio. So usually when I'm on set, I'm usually recording or making projects. Like right. this last season of Saints and Sinners, I, I did a mixtape that's I'm going to drop this, this summer because you have that kind of time. But then when you're out off of not filming, like now I'm on the road promoting, right. doing shows and you know, right. pushing the brand. Right, do you feel that um, um, actors in your field of, of your level are, are, paid, are paid enough? Are you, are you happy with, the, with that? Or? Well, you always want more money. Well, yeah, clearly. But, but I mean, it depends on who well, you are. Let me, so, let me reverse the question. Yeah. Do white people get paid more than black people in that business? What you think? <laughs> I mean, is that a trick question? I mean, again, it depends on who you are. Like, you right. know, but but for, I think if we if you look if you sat down and looked at the the numbers, probably I right. Mean, and what, so yeah, there's still racism know. within the whole um, situation. I think there's elements of racism in every right. facet. No, of there life. is. I think it's gotten a lot better. Right. Uh, especially now because of, you know no, and nothing can be done in the dark anymore. So everything is getting exposed. So right. I think that's a good thing. But uh, you know, I think it's a lot better. But yeah, there's, of course there's racism in, right. in Hollywood for sure. Right. Let's talk about your album, man, because I really want to yeah. help you push this album. Yeah, yeah. You know? Who do you have? Are there any special features on the album? Obviously, other than yourself. I, don't have, I'm, I did. The, I wrote the whole album, all nine songs. Only feature I got on there is Infrared, who wore, uh, all the way up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I know it? Infrared. I had, yeah. him, I had him in here. That's yeah. my dude. Yeah, yeah. We, we wrote a song called Gold on there. Right. But the rest of the album is all me, man. Yeah. It's all me. Yeah. I mean, I work with about three or four different producers. Do you produce I, also, or you just write? I, I produce as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, but I'm mainly a singer songwriter. Right. Yeah, so, so that was basically. It was my, it was my, my baby, my labor of love. So it's like you know, it's ten records. It's called Love Episodic, and it's dope. I wish you would have heard the album well, well, before it, because then you'd be like, oh, okay. Well, listen. Oh, I get listen, it. Listen, I don't know if you ever watched this show before, but I have this thing on this show, right? Yeah. It's called On the Spot. Okay. You know what that means? Yeah. What does that mean? You want me to sing? I want you to sing. I want to hear this voice. Okay. And my the, audience want to hear it too. The new single is called Never Be. The ladies give me throw their panties too. So throw them all in my DM and then I'll send it to It's him. called Never. It goes I, like this. Cause if I find someone new, she will never be you. Never be you. I realize. Cause if I find somebody new, she'll never be you. Never be you. Not in this life. Woo, goddamn, that boy can sing. He good. <laughs> <laughs> now that was dope. What up? Dope. Yo, you can sing. Thanks, man. Damn. I wasn't lip syncing in Dreamgirls, by no, the way. You Just wasn't? I thought that. you was lip syncing. Yeah, you and everybody else. Yeah? Yeah. How you feel about Millie Vanilla, man? I mean, you know, they got the bag. <laughs> they got the bag. 
So that's where we are. Oh, let's go there. So how do you feel about talent versus what you're saying, popularity? I, I think it's unfortunate. Right. But I think with social media, everybody's able to create the illusion of who they are and what they stand for. So right. it's just, I think technology has kind of exacerbated it and made it easier for, yeah, I call it the great watered down generation. Uh, everything is like minimalized and real talent has a tough time breaking through as opposed to someone right. who is just on constant debauchery and you know, world star and doing shit right. like going out slapping for. If I went down the stairs right now and just slapped the, slapped the shit out of an old lady. million views. I'm getting views. But like, meanwhile, I got this whole album over here. Oh, that's cool, cool. But you slapped her though. Right. You know, so it's right. like, it's, it's, um, it's just where we're at. You know what I mean? I always said talent, I'm sorry. I always said technology was the death of talent. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. Because people are more focused on what you just said. Yeah, yeah. He slapped the hell out of this motherfucker. I'm watching this 20 times. Yeah. But he can sing. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. He slapped the shit out of this motherfucker. Watch yeah. it. But I, I heard somebody say something like if Stevie Wonder were like trying to get a deal right now, he would have to actually, it'd be a, a labor to get a deal as far as him walking into a label with a, hey, you know, yeah. like in this era right now, he's walking not knowing who he was. Right. So that's just, we just got to roll with the punches and figure right. out how to, how to, right. you know. All right, so Survive. before we get out of here, man, is there yeah. anything you want to cover, let the people know about yourself that we didn't cover? Um, I love to cook. I love red wine. I love long walks on the beach. Oh, you trying to get some I love jazz. jazz. You trying to get some pussy right I now. love jazz. <laughs> nah. nah. R&B does, you know how they do. <laughs> the, the name of the album is Love Episodic. It is out right now. It's on iTunes, Spotify, it's 10 records. Right. Um, the new single is Never Be You. The video drops this weekend after my show, Saints and Sinners, which comes on 9 p.m. every Sunday night on Bounce. Mm -hmm. So log on, Key Sings is everything. I, IG, Twitter, Facebook, that's how you can find me. Download the album, you're gonna love it. And then this summer, I'm gonna drop the mixtape called Trap Sodic, which is the alter ego, the love episodic. Right. And it's trap music, it's R&B over right. trap music. So you can listen to the mixtape during the day right. at the pool. In, in the pool? Go take a shower. Right. Put your slacks on, eat some put dinner. Your slacks. Put your slacks on <laughs> and your loafers. Slacks and loafers. Put, put that linen button down on. Right, right. Put her sundress on and, and, and put on that love episodic and ride out and, hey. and make a baby or something. I'm fucking with you. Do Yo, something positive. You need a tour DJ, man? Let's get some money, man. Let's do it. We'll let's, talk about it. Let's do it. Hey, so, hey, I'm up here hustling, man. That's what we do, man. DJ Thorough, man. Let them know the name again. Love episodic. Keith Robinson checking in with This Is 50. There it is, man. And like always, man, when you see us, one knee us. That means pay respects. Ah. Yeah.